How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. G'day Olufemi gang, my name is Nick. Today we are going to look at five more practical tips that you can do in After Effects to improve your workflow and make things just a teeny bit easier. And these are definitely things that I wish I had known when I started using After Effects when I was just a wee lad. In primary school, I was just using After Effects to do everything. Not really, I didn't start till like I was in my 20s, but you get the idea. And these are tips that I use every single day. These are things that really help me out and I wanna share this knowledge with you guys because I think it's important that we have more After Effects users out there, but it has a lot of quirks, so sit back and let's get started. This video proudly sponsored by Invito Elements. We all know about parenting objects to another object, but what if you want the object to not only parent to the object, but inherit the transform properties as well? Well, if you hold shift while pick whipping to the parent object, the object will inherit the parent's transform properties as well. This comes in handy if you want an object to snap to the same position as another, like this rectangle to the center of this text, or a circle to another circle. Super useful. Say you want to apply the same effects to a whole bunch of layers, but you don't want to add it to each individual layer or have to pre-comp everything so you can add the effect to the whole timeline. Well, this is where adjustment layers come in. Think of adjustment layers like a blanket. Everything that is below the adjustment layer will be affected by the effects you put on the adjustment layer. You add an adjustment layer above the layers you want to be affected, then apply the effects you want. And everything below the adjustment layer has the effect applied and everything above the adjustment layer doesn't. Simple. If you ever get Illustrator or Vector Art, you want to be able to take advantage of infinite resolution that Vector Art can provide. But bringing it into the After Effects timeline doesn't seem to do that by default. What gives? Well, there is a sneaky little button that you need to check called the Collapse Transform button that will turn on the infinite resolution of your Vector Art. And voila, you've got crisp edges back. Have you ever wanted to resize a composition, but couldn't be bothered typing in numbers in the composition panel to get things just right? Well, if you click on this button here, you enable a mode that allows you to crop the composition by just dragging a box around the area of interest you want to crop. And then by going up to the composition menu, select crop to region of interest. And voila, your composition has been resized. It's a real pain to have to manually align things in After Effects, but by using the align tools, it can save you a lot of headache. If you have a single object, you can use the align tool to make your text or object align vertically or horizontally to the center, left or right of the composition. Or if you have multiple objects, you can use the align tools to space things equally apart. It's a super useful panel and one I know you will use once you know it's there. Well done guys, you've made it to the end of the video, so I'm going to leave you with one final practical tip and that is how Invato Elements can supercharge your workflow. I pretty much use Invato Elements in my projects every month and it saves me so much time. At $9 for your first month, you'll get access to 58 million creative assets including After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, stock footage, royalty-free music, logos, stock imagery and much, much more. Check the description for more info. All right, guys, well, that is it. Thanks for watching. And we've got some comments from the YouTube channel that we're going to read on here right now. Oh, dude, this one from Papa Van Gogh. Dude, much love. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate the uh, the immense love for watching this video. And I'm, I really hope that it blessed you. Acromancia, uh, amazing video, sir. I learned a lot. So could you please make a video on After Effects workspace and how to customize a professional workflow because your workspace looks clean and efficient. This is something that... um. I enjoy doing and uh, I do think that learning how to optimize your After Effects workspace is a big thing and it will be different for everybody. I definitely have different workspaces for different things. So I definitely think it is worthwhile looking at different workspaces uh, and optimizing for the things you want to do. And this is from Harpsichord Vinyl Gallery. Uh, this is not designed to calm down the audience. Looks more like a layout of annoying commercials, if you ask me. You're right, I didn't design it to be a very calming kind of design title. I think it was more designed, well, I've, effectively, I was trying to mimic the opening titles to Scott Pilgrim 
uh, versus the world. But I get it. It's not your speed. But thank you, thank you for the uh, comment. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. And if you appreciated this video in any shape or form, why not click the subscribe button and smash that like for us here on the channel. It really helps us out. And if you like this video and want some more tips, we've actually got another video on five more tips in After Effects that'll help you out. You can check the link in the description below. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, Artifacts should never be used for editing. Peace.